Welcome back. Joining us now is North Central Sports Information Director, Clark Tusher. Clark, thanks for stopping by. It's good to be back. So the men's track and field team proved that it can compete with the best of the best as they have a nice showing at the 103rd Drake Relays. Uh, yeah, they, they took uh, a contingent of about 20 guys, placed highly in several events, uh, had a school record in the shuttle hurdle relay, um, you know, a, a national leading performance in the pole vault, uh, you know, a top 10 national performance in the 10K, so certainly uh, a productive trip out to Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, and you mentioned that shuttle relay. It's a little bit different. It's not a normal event that you'd see at most meets. What, what is the shuttle hurdle relay for those who don't know? Yeah, it's something you only see at meets like this where mm -hmm. they add a, a ton of different relay events, and uh, basically you have four hurdlers, and uh, you have two going in each direction, and they and they just basically don't really necessarily tag or pass a baton or anything mm -hmm. like that, but as soon as one finishes, the other one goes back the other way. So it's kind of a, a means of creating a relay race where there isn't normally one. And they set a school record in the event, and another relay team that dropped their time dramatically is the 4x200 team, who now own the second fastest time in Division Three after their showing at the Drake Relays. Uh, yeah, you know, the same team ran the 4x200 and 4x400 relays. Um, and they just missed the school record in the 4x200 by, by two hundredths of a second. Wow. Um, over the time that they just set last year in the same meet. Mm -hmm. um, and the 4x400, obviously, which is a more, uh, more important event because it's contested at the national championships, uh, finishing second uh, among Division three teams, at least, to uh, the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire by about nine-tenths of a second. So uh, certainly stamping themselves as a contender for a, a relay championship in that event. And you mentioned the pole vault, Josh Winder. He, he ends up fifth, but that's first for Division uh, three athletes. How does that benefit him going up against some of this D1, D2 competition? Well, fortunately, our guys are kind of used to that by now because they get a regular opportunity to compete against athletes of that caliber. Mm -hmm. uh, but going into an event like that where you know you have to be at your, at your best to, to even be able to compete with the top guys, uh, certainly is a good mental practice for a national championship event. And the Cardinals really showed their depth because they had about 20 athletes at the Drake Relays, but the remainder of the athletes competed on the men's side at the Benedictine University Twilight Invitational, and they take home first place. Yeah, quite a few performances out there that were uh, uh, national caliber as well. You know, Peter Garrity is just two weeks into coming back after a, an injury that kept him out of all of the indoor season. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the defending outdoor national championship and uh, cleared a a season best that puts him second in the nation behind Josh Winder in terms of Division Three standings. Uh, and then we have Mike Giaquinto off the football team. He just came out for track this spring. He's only been competing a couple of weeks. He sets a varsity record in the javelin throw. So uh, uh, it's normally an event where somebody has to you know, practice it for, for months or years and get the technique down and everything. Mike's been out here for two weeks and, 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 and chucks one out there and has a chance <laughs> to go to nationals. So uh, certainly a, a welcome surprise in the throwing events. And the, with the conference meet this weekend, the Cardinals are looking to bring home the conference championship again. Is there anything that could stop them, you think? Uh, Augustana's team is very good. They're ranked in the top ten. Um, you know, a lot of their performances, the top performances that got them ranked in the first place happened early in the year. So uh, they've kind of been training through some of these meets and getting ready for, uh, for the championships the same way as North Central has. You know, they've got a coach that's uh, been there quite a long time, has, has done a lot of winning over there. And so they've certainly got... Uh, some tradition on their side and they'll be looking to uh, to get back into uh, first place like they did a couple of years ago. Um, so we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens with them. They, they would definitely be uh, the other top contender. And another conference race that's probably the, the tightest one this season is the race for to who gets into the baseball tournament. The Cardinals are right there, but they had a little bit of a slip up this last weekend with Wheaton. Uh, yeah, they got swept at Wheaton, uh, lost three in a row and uh, dropped down into sixth place, but they're only two games out of first. Uh, and, they, and first place is North Park, who they play this weekend mm -hmm. in the final series uh, of the conference play. So, uh, you know, it's it, kind of one of those Tour de France, you know, jumbled finishes right. at the end uh, where, you know, there could be a, a very good team that doesn't make this conference tournament and uh, nobody wants to be in that situation. So, um, you know, they have, you know, their future in their hands there and uh, they're going to be playing uh, the last game of the season uh, at home on Sunday. And do you think that it's, it's a must sweep for the Cardinals in order to get in, or do you think two out of three might get them in? They might need some help winning two out of three. Um, you know, a sweep is always a difficult thing to predict for any team, especially in a season like this, but right. it certainly, uh, certainly would help. And it's never too early to start talking football, and good news for some of the members of the team this week, as seven players were selected to the National Football Foundation's Hampshire Honor Society. Well, um, you know, they, it was the largest delegation that North Central's ever had. Uh, for that particular honor. Uh, we had five last year, which had been the previous best. And uh, they actually um, ranked ninth among Division three schools and 16th among all schools in the country 
in terms of the number of, of athletes you have to have on that list. In order to get on there, you have to have a 3.2. You have to be a good football player. You have to be uh, an outstanding citizen. And the fact that we have that many uh, individuals on the team at North Central certainly speaks to the character of those guys in addition to their ability as football players. And with the team getting back out there and practicing, what, what are things looking like for next season? Are the Cardinals still feeling a little bit of that sting from Wabash? Well, I don't think that's going to go away until the season starts next fall. Um, you know, they've certainly a lot of got returning guys on offense. You know, they're still trying to sort out their situation at quarterback and, and who's going to who's going to start, and who's going to be the backup. You know, defensively, they're definitely shuffling a lot of guys around, trying to uh, replace a lot of graduated seniors. Uh, several guys with you know experience on that side of the ball, but trying to find uh, the right places for all of them is going to be the challenge this spring. And another team ends their season and not the way they'd like is the softball team falls to the University of Chicago and they won't be getting into the CCIW tournament this year. Uh, yeah, you know, they wound up uh, about a game short of, of being able to get into that this year. Uh, so a, a season where they were short on numbers and it had some injury problems. So uh, certainly a good coaching job by the by Coach K and his coaching staff to, to get them to that point where they were still contending in the last week of the season. So. Um, the next uh, step will be uh, recruiting and trying to get back into it next year. Well, we look forward to watching them get back to it next year. Clark, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. The women's track and field team is back on the track this weekend at Illinois Wesleyan University for the CCIW Championships. I'm Mark Dahlquist. See you here next week on the Cardinal Report.